Hello, good afternoon, class. You are welcome to our lecture once again. And, uh, I am the course facilitator for PS2 and so My name is Mrs. Rosna de Momo. Uh, in our last lecture, we talked about types of library materials. And we will mention print and non-print library materials. Today, we shall be considering the organization of library materials and the, the objectives of this topic is to is that the objectives of this topic are as follows. At the end of this lecture, you should be able to define library classification and identify the types of library classification schemes. Two, so to be able to explain the importance of library classification scheme. Three, you should be able to define the library catalog, understand the different forms of library catalog and their importance. Four, you should also be able to comprehend or know the information on the library on library catalog entry. Uh, it is important uh, for us to talk about organization of library materials. This is to help you to know how the materials in the library are organized or rather classified. Materials like books, like journals, government publications we have talked about before. And uh, you should be conversant with the arrangement so that whenever you need to use any of these materials, you should be able to locate them with ease without wasting of time. So that is the reason for this teaching you this topic, organization of library materials. And under this uh, topic, under this topic, we are going to be considering some subtopics. The first subtopic here is cataloging. And uh, by cataloging, When we talk of cataloging in the library, it's a process where all physical details of materials are recorded, recorded on cards. Uh, when we talk of material like record, uh, cataloging, what it means is that before any book or journal is placed on the shelf for library users to use, they are processed. And the process of, uh, of doing that, part of the processing is the cataloging, which means you know, recording all the physical details of a particular book on a card. And uh, the physical details that are recorded includes the following. One, we have the author's name. The, we have the author's name, the title of the book, the imprint, which includes the place of publication, that is where the book is published, publisher, the publisher of the book, and the date of publication. We also have the collection and series notes area. This consists of uh, the pagination of the book. If there are illustrations in the book, they are also indicated. 
And if the book belongs to a particular series, they are also included. Then we also have bibliography. That is, in a particular book, some, some writers will always you know, give us or list the sources they have consulted to write their books and they title it bibliography. If such bibliography is included in a particular book that is being catalogued, the pages of the bibliography are also included. Then we have the ISBN number of the book, which is International Standard Book Number. Then tracings, that is, it means other added entry, and the call number, which is the class number. Remember that this information that is being recorded, the physical details of this material are found within the book. They are not found outside the book. It's from the book. This information you know, is recorded before the books. You know, the books, this information is recorded before the book can be placed on the shelf. For library users to use them. That is that about only. Yes. Other subtopics, apart from the cataloging that I've talked about, are we have the classification. We are going to be talking about is the, we have the classification, classification scheme, types of library classification importance of classification scheme, library catalog, physical forms of library catalog, and information on card catalog entry. Yes, since I've already talked about cataloging, the next thing now is to talk about classification. Yes, when we talk about classification, classification is the process by which we group things according to their likeness and separate them according to their differences. Yes, things can be classified differently and by different people according to different purposes or needs. So, uh, we we'll talk about general classification, it means grouping of things you know, according to their likeness and they're separating things according to their uh, differences. So when we classify, even the library too, we classify books. By classification of uh, books in the library, it means, you know, uh, arrangement of all knowledge into generally accepted classes. So libraries classify books. When we look at general classification, we say general classification means grouping of things according to their likeness and separating them according to their differences. So in the library too, books are grouped according to their subjects. You know, subjects, you know, the books we have differs in terms of uh, uh, their subjects. So libraries classify books according to their subject, so that when users come, you know, they, with their subject, they, and they will need any material in their subject area, they can easily assess them and, they, and assess them. So, we now, from there, we can now go to a classification scheme. And when we talk about classification scheme, uh, we are talking about uh, uh, classification scheme. It's a printed classification for arranging books. Classification scheme is a printed classification for arranging books in the library. You see, I have just told you that libraries you no know, classify books, and uh, when we classify books. We, we, we do that according to the, according to the subject of the books. 
Then, uh, in classifying books, we also uh, write uh, numbers on the books, which we call class mark. This class mark, you know, is a combination of uh, the subject of the book and the author's name. And these class marks are written on the spine of the books. And it's based on the class mark that the books are classified in the library or put on the shelves in the library. So that with the class mark, a user can identify the book he or she is looking for. And the class mark that the libraries give to books or right on the spine of the books are derived from classification scheme. And as I've mentioned earlier, I said classification schemes are print classification scheme is a printed classification for arranging books. And some of these classification schemes uses a, a notation which consists of uh, symbols which can be adopted, which are adopted, you know, for classification of books. Some use a uh, single notation, that is numbers or figures. Why some used mixed notations, which means uh, both numbers and uh, uh, both uh, figures and uh, alphabets. So from here we'll be looking at, and I've told you that the importance of classification, why libraries classify their books is to ensure it's for convenience and also to allow library users to locate the books they, you know, they, they need with ease and uh, you know, without wasting of time. So, and we have different types of uh, classification schemes. There are different types of classification schemes. That is, there are different types of printed classification scheme for arranging books in the library. <coughs> so that now takes us to types of library classification. Yes. We'll be looking at types of library classification scheme. One, we have Library of Congress classification scheme. We also have a uh, Dewey Decimal Classification Scheme, Universal Decimal Classification Scheme, Expansive Classification Scheme, sorry, Expansive Classification of Cotta. Then we also have Bibliographic Classification of H.E. Bliss. The years, you know, uh, the, we have the years beside the types of classification scheme when these uh, schemes were developed. First of all, we look at the uh, Dewey classification scheme. Dewey classification scheme is mainly used to classify books in small libraries, like uh, special libraries we have talked about, school libraries, they are small libraries. They use a Dewey Decimal Classification Scheme to classify their books. And uh, Dewey divided human knowledge into, uh, into 900. For instance, 00 is given to general works. 100 is given to philosophy. 200 is given to religion. 300 social sciences, 400 language, uh, lang uh, languages, uh, 500 pure sciences, 600 technology, through applied sciences, 700 fine arts, 800 literature, and 900 history. Yes, the materials, why I said, you know, uh, this classification scheme divided human uh, knowledge into, or knowledge into 10 main classes. 
The materials we have in the library, the books, the journals, they, uh, you know, they, con they contain uh, human knowledge. You know, if information they contain uh, classifiers, human knowledge that are documented. And this information, this, uh, this information, you know, these materials are in different uh, areas. We have philosophy, that is the kind of materials we have in the library. We have materials in the area of philosophy, religion, social sciences, languages, health sciences, and the rest. And so, using uh, Dewey Decimal Classification means that works we consider, materials we consider as general, you find them, you know, the numbers allocated to such materials is 000. zero, zero. And uh, such materials include reference materials. We've talked about reference materials before. So I will not dwell much on uh, DDC, what is Dewey Decimal Classification. As I've said, they are used to classify library books in small libraries, like special libraries and school libraries. But uh, the classification scheme mainly used by uh, big libraries like academic libraries or it's the Library of Congress classification scheme. We call it LC. It was developed, you know, in America by Library of Congress. And uh, as I said, it's used for, it's used by, you know, big libraries to classify, with uh, large collections to classify their library materials. It has mixed notation. I've talked about notation before. It's a symbol that is used to represent a subject. It has mixed notation, combining alphabets and figures. And that is why, like, in university libraries used a uh, Library of Congress as classification scheme to classify their materials. And that's why if you go to visit our library, you pick any of our book, you check the spine, you will see the you will see numbers written there. With uh, we will see alphabets as well as uh, numbers. That shows uh, the class mark of the book derived from Library of Congress classification. And as I said, it is used. It is mostly used in academic libraries, which is uh, they are big libraries. Yes, all books are placed in capital letters, A to Z. Yes. That is what Library of Congress Classification Scheme has done. It has classified books, you know, using alphabet A to Z. When we look at DDC, it used only number. But uh, DD, uh, LC now, which is Library of Congress Classification Scheme, you know, has, or use, it uses, uh, a, uses uh, both uh, alphabets and uh, figures. And it has also uh, divided human knowledge, you know, into uh, eight, using uh, alphabet A to Z. So the outline is there. You can see the outline. We have, we have A, standing for general works here. Why DDC was using 000? Library of Congress is using A for general works. I uh, gave example of the materials we call general works in the library. They are reference materials. Then it's B is given to, to classify materials under philosophy and religion. C and D are given to history. E is given to American history and general uh, general U.S. history, F also American history, then G is for geography, H is for social materials under social science. Though H, for instance, is given you know, for social science, but we must know that there are many uh, courses under social science. For instance, we have political science, it's under social science, economics, it's under social science, so, and uh, if 
you go to the library now to look for to look for any book in economics or political science this age is further subdivided you may have uh, sorry age for economic economics for instance you may have uh, ha for economics because it's social science you may have h b for sorry i suppose that the other time no for sociology so we have sociology under social science we also have a, a economics under social science then j is used for polit materials under political science so for those of you who are studying political science as you go to the library to look for materials in the area of political science you can just ask for the chef that is you know that is classified as chef j you'll be able to find all materials you are looking for in the area of political science then for those of you in social science like sociology economics if you when time you visit our libraries you should be able to find your materials under uh, on the on the shelves that are labeled h either h a h b h c and so on and so forth then we have k for law l for education so chef l in under chef l or on chef l you will find all education materials music m and fine arts then uh p language and literature q science r medicine s agriculture uh t technology u military science v we have naval science and z bibliography and library science so using a library of congress to classify to classify our materials help us to group books you know where books in the same we help us to bring together books that are in, in a particular subject together so that when users come to the library to look for materials in a particular subject you know they you know they will, they will, they will be able to find them together not scattered so that is what the classification scheme like library of congress has helped university libraries to do and that now takes us to importance of a uh, classification scheme i will not dwell much on other classification scheme the one that is more imp or most important to us is the library of congress classification scheme then importance of classification scheme why is it important from what i have said so far welcome to our lecture series so talking about uh, importance of classification scheme it helps to pinpoint a specific or precisely defined item of information that is it helps uh, the libraries you know to you know to to know a specific place to place library item so that whenever the users need them they will know where to get them a precise place to get to find them it helps it also helps to locate particular library item on the shelf it also help the library users to locate particular items on the shelf it helps to show complete range of subjects available in the library and their relationship to another so Now, for instance, if any time you visit the library, you will see all the books. For instance, in economics, they packed together, or books in sociology packed together on the same shelf, the same area. It is the classification scheme that has helped you know the libraries to be able to group those materials the, you know, the way they are. Then it also is for easy location of materials on the shelf. It helps users. to locate materials with ease you know on the shelf then i i mentioned the uh, 
I made mention of a class mark. The class mark is what, you know, class mark is the, represent the approximation of the subject or discipline of a particular material. Class mark, that is, is the, it represents what the subject of a particular book is. And that is what like, uh, you find on the book spine in the library. Whenever you pick any book from the library, you check the spine, you will see a number written on it. That is what we call class mark. And that class mark is, you know, represent the subject of that particular book. And is, 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 is also used, you know, for shelving. After use, it, the books will return to the shelf based on their class mark. Then we also have what we call a session number. A session numbers are assigned to library materials as they are acquired into the library. A session numbers, they are numbers that are given to library books in order of acquisition, the way they are acquired. The one that comes first is given, for instance, if the one that comes yesterday is bearing 34, the next one today will be at 35, and so on and so forth. Then from here we move to uh, the library catalog. Yes, I've talked about cataloging. I said cataloging is the process of recording the physical details of a book. And it includes the title of the, the author of the book in cataloging. We record, say before any book is placed on the shelf, the librarians have to do what we call cataloging. That is, they record some information you know, about from the book, which in which the information include the author of the book, the title, the imprint that is where the book is published, the publisher and the date of publication. We also have the collection and the notes area. We have the bibliography. We also have the ISBN number and the added entries. So uh, this records is you know this record, this physical record that is made, you know or that is done can be done either on a card, or on a book, or on a loose sheet of paper, or it could also be done on a computer, or it could be done you know, online. So that now brings us to library catalog. When we talk about library catalog, say the library catalog can be defined as a list of library materials arranged in an orderly manner for easy retrieval. Yes, the library catalog lists all the resources, the information materials, or the books that are in a particular library. They are list them and arrange them in an orderly manner. And the purpose of the library catalog is to help the library users to be able to retrieve books from the library shelf. So we said the library catalog is the key to the use of library. For you to be able to use, uh, to find resources or to find information resources or books with ease in the library, the first point of contact should be the library catalog. It is kept near the entrance you know, of the library for easy accessibility. So as you enter the university library, if you want to know the resources or the books that are available in that library, maybe as you are coming, you may come with a particular title of book in mind. You can confirm that from the library catalog. And when we talk about library catalog, you know, it has two forms. Library catalog has two forms. First of all, we talk about the physical forms of library catalog. Okay, the physical forms of library catalog has to do with 
the recording of the physical information or details of a book, like the cataloging. So, and uh, when we talk about the physical forms, under physical forms, we have what we call cards, catalog, book catalog, shift catalogs, computerized catalog, or online public access catalog. We take them one after the other. So I said, I under physical forms of library catalog, we have the card catalog, the book catalog, the shift catalog, the computerized catalog, and the online public access catalog. So uh, it's just the format of uh, recording uh, the physical uh, details of a book. Where the physical details of a book are recorded on a card. We said it is a card catalog. These are some of the examples here. You can see them here. These are examples of a card. Uh, these are examples of a card catalog. Yes, we have the author catalog here. We have the title catalog. We have the subject. So this is an example of author catalog. All the physical details of a book is recorded on a card. We have the title here, the author's name. We have the title of the book. We have the collection, the imprint the collection area, the bibliography, the ISBN, and so on and so forth. This is an example of a card catalog. And a situation where this information, this physical details of a book is recorded on a notebooks, or note on, on a note on using notebooks, using a notebook instead of card, we call that book catalog. So where the physical details of books are recorded on, note, on notebooks, we call that book catalog. And where the physical details are also recorded on a loose sheet of papers, we call that sheaf cat, catalog. Then we have a online public access catalog. Online public access catalog. This is the most modern form of catalog. One needs a microcomputer with a large memory. Bibliographic records of all the documents in a collection are stored in the computer memory disk. It is also the most efficient. Yes, it possesses all the advantages of other forms of catalog. And, uh, when we talk about the online public access catalog, this catalog can be accessed online. This catalog can be accessed online. The physical, uh, the information, the physical details of a book that is recorded, you know, is recorded in the computer, in a computer, and it can be record, it can be accessed online. And in the, in the use of an online public access catalog, there must be network. There must be network for this kind of a catalog to be in a operation. So from there, we also move to, uh, we have another type of catalog, which we call computerized catalog, which can be accessed offline. Our libraries can also you know, uh, record the, the physical details of their books. 
you know, in a computer, and uh, you know, it can be assessed by library users to be able to assess the the, the materials in the library. But in this in this uh, computer, this type of uh, computerized catalog, you may not need a, a network to to do it. You can do it, you know, offline. Just record it on the computer as long as there is light. And the computer will also, you know, using computer in this situation means that there must be a software developed for the purpose of uh, recording these uh, physical details. So some libraries have computerized their their, their resources. Then we have the finally we have the inner forms of library catalog. The inner forms has to do with the arrangement of card catalog in the cap in the uh, catalog catalog cabinet. Yes, we have what we call dictionary catalog. Dictionary catalog is where you arrange all the the catalog cards alphabetically. All the catalog cards you arrange alphabetically. And we also have the classified catalog. I'm sorry, under the dictionary catalog we have author title catalog where all the, the cards the catalog cards bearing the author's name and the title's name, uh, title of the books, are arranged, uh, you know, interfied alphabetically. Then the the card, the card carrying the subject of the of the books are also filed alphabetically. Then we also have what we call classified catalog. In the case of classified catalog, you know, all the materials are arranged based on the classification number but it's not too common classified catalog is not too common the most used uh, form of form of a inner uh, catalog is what we call a dictionary catalog then using the library catalog to assess uh, library materials yes you can use a uh, if you are to assess library books, the first point of contact will be the library catalog. You can check the book using the library catalog. You can check the book using the author's name. Or you can use the title of the book. If you can remember the book, the title of the book, you can use the title of the book. And uh, even if the author, even if the book has more than one author, you can use any of the author's name to check, you know, uh, to check for a particular, for, to check for any book of your choice using the library catalog. As I've said, you can also use the title of the book, even if you don't, you cannot remember the name of the author. Remembering the title of the book, you should be able to locate the book from the catalog. And once you are able to get the, the, the the, the, the book from the catalog. I mean, you, see, you will not get the, the book from the catalog, but it's the information about the book you will get from the catalog. And one, the information will also include the class mark of the book. The information, you know, on the catalog card will include the class mark of the book. So it's for you to get the class mark of the book from the catalog and then go to the shelf to, to locate the particular book you are looking for. So, so far, we've talked about organization of library materials. And library materials are organized so that users can have access to them uh, with ease, without wasting of time. And we use cataloging and the classification to, or, to organize library materials. That's, uh, with this, we have come to the end of the lecture. But there are some self-assessment exercise for you to, you know, to practice. Yes. Until we meet in our next lecture. Thank you.